Yes, okay, so the title of this presentation is Please Mock Me. Uh, so hello everyone, Portland, uh, the lovely weather today. Uh, a year and a half ago, I moved to Florida. So today, you know, like the weather is really selling me on Orlando. Uh, I, I'm talking here about test doubles, not our company test double, but rather the concept test double. Uh, it's just a highbrow way to say a mock object. So we're gonna talk about that today. Now, Ruby has had lots of options for mocking. Uh, you have tools like Mocha, RSpec mocks, RR, Flex mock, mini tests has a built-in mock thing. Um, there's probably others, but the Wi-Fi is not working. Uh, uh, I've got a secret, which is like, I don't like any of them. Um, and so, you know, like my approach to open source is actually very unlike what Eileen presented today. And we're going to talk about that through this pop quiz. So get ready. Uh, here's the question. What should you do when you don't like an open source thing? And you have two options. Option A, help improve the thing. Or option B, create a brand new thing. And yeah, my style is I like, create a brand new thing ignorantly. Uh, so that's how this gem happened, and you can in gem install mocktail. Uh, so let's say we have a class called create slides, and it's got a method called create, and you have a you pass it a topic, and then it uh, it literally opens the keynote app. And so this is disruptive to call from a test. So you might say, hey, I want to fake this. Now we don't have time today to answer. Should you fake this? That's the companion talk called please don't mock me, and that's a 50 minute one. So there's more more to talk about there. Uh, so let's say we, I want to fake this, and so. Uh, all right, so I got the class there. Um, all I say is my, make me a mocktail of create slides, and then it returns it. Uh, so that's a fake thing. And then I can uh, call all of the methods on it. And so I call it with create mocking. It just returns nil by default. So you might say, oh, I want to stub this. And stub just means to like kind of configure a response for a mocked method. So here I've got this DSL method stubs. And I call the method just like I expect the subject under test to call it. And then I chain with with. And I, I, in that block there, I just return whatever I want it to return. So, so I've made the stub. And I call this a demonstration. So it's very greppable. Like the subject and the, and the test both usually have the exact same invocation. So it's really clear and not confusing. Uh, and then this, when the stubbing is satisfied and called the same way, it's going to return that array. OK, so it just looks like this. I call slides.create mocking. It returns the array. I call it with not mocking. And it just returns nil because the subbing wasn't satisfied. It's a super duper robust API. It can do everything that you might ever want to do, especially stuff you shouldn't. Uh, so like if I want to ensure that a string is passed and I don't want to use a type system, I could just write this uh, test. And this is stubs, slides.create. And then I can take a block parameter, which is like a little matcher DSL. And I can say m dot is a string. And only when that matcher is matched, then return some slides. And so I can call it then with mocking, you know, literally any string, uh, or like a number here, and then that's not satisfied, so that'll return nil. Uh, and so there's lots of built-in matchers, as well as like a custom matcher API that you can play with. Uh, so the readme has everything you want about stubbing. Uh, you know it's good because the itty bitty scroll bars is like very long. <laughs> so let's say you want to verify that a certain, certain thing was called. Uh, so let's say slides.create neat. I call that. I want to make sure it's called. I can just say verify that slides.create was called with neat. Uh, and then it just returns nil. It's passed. And so if I say, hey, verify it was also called with cool, that's going to blow up because it didn't happen. So you get this really nice error message that says, hey, expect it to be called with, you know, create with cool. It was actually called differently one time with neat. And it prints it out so, so you can kind of have a hope of figuring it out. Now it's a symmetrical API with stubs. They totally match each other and are completely compatible. Uh, and so I can say, like, you know, if I call it a couple times here, I can verify just the same sort of thing, you know, make sure it's called with a string and that'll pass. But if I say, like, I've got additional cool stuff, like I could say, make sure it's called exactly one time, and that'll blow up, because we just called it twice at the top. So it'll say, you know, cool messages here, like, you know, expected it to be called with one time, was actually called this way two times. Like, very instructive, because the, the mocking is confusing. So if, <laughs> if you are confused, I've got a method called explain. You just pass it any mock, and it'll return a double explanation. And so you can print out the message about it. It'll, like, give you a, you know, a little, like, text adventure saying, here, here you know, this is a fake thing. Here's all all the mocked messages, uh, you know, here's all the stubbings, and here's all the actual calls. And then there's a reference object, which returns a double data, which has all of this introspective data that you can use. And uh, you know, so metaprogramming is really scary, but like it's, it's, it's important to have good in introspection tools. And so you can answer all kinds of questions. Like for example, uh, you know, how many calls were there? There were three. How many times were the stubbing satisfied? There were two. So is that all? No. There's other stuff, too. Uh, it supports a TDD workflow. And so there's a cool method missing thing override that I did. So like if you want to add a method called destroy, you just call it. And then it'll print out an error saying, hey, do you want to define that method? Here's like a little 
copy paste stub, and so you can just kind of paste it right in. So if you're in a creative mode, it makes it go fast. And then for dependency injection, uh, you can uh, just uh, uh, literally call like, another method called mocktail.ofnext and then pass it the class. Uh, and what that's going to do is when I call talk, uh, it stubs the new method on the class, and now these two things are going to be the exact same mock instance, so I don't have to make a goofy dependency injection API. It just works. It's really neat. Uh, so if you're mildly interested in this, you can find us on GitHub uh, under the test double org at Mocktail. Uh, it's a Portland-friendly gem because uh, it's only been downloaded 5,000 times, and so it's still very hip. Uh, uh, and I hope you all go and check it out. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for your time. I appreciate it.